Hey guys, this is Joe. I'm the Digital Astronomer. Welcome to my channel. Um, on Christmas morning, I woke up and in addition to all of the wonderful gifts that my family gave me, I found out that I got a brand new gift from Dwarf Labs. Not the Dwarf 2, I've already gotten that from them, but they sent out and released their new app. And I want to take a few moments today. I haven't got to take it out at an image with it because unfortunately we are clouded up. Going to have about four or five days here of rain and even possible snow. But I did get a chance to walk through the app, take a look at it, find out about some of the new features. And I want to share them with you right now. Stick around. Okay, I want to quickly just walk you through how this works. Let me click, go over to the Dwarf Labs app. First thing you'll notice here on this uh, basic homepage is we've got um, our, um, I'm already connected. Um, I can go to photo, but I also have a couple settings I want to show you down here very quickly. The light settings, I think this is a really great feature that they've put in. You know, on the side of the Dwarf 2, we have the ring light indicator. Um, and then we also have the battery indicator. Um, it's very helpful to be able to turn those. In fact, it's a necessity to turn those off when you shoot your dark frames. It's also a very polite thing to do if you're out at a dark skies you know, location and you don't want to take people's night vision away. You want to turn these off. Used to be that those were hidden in the settings section. They've put it here now on this home page. I think that's very helpful. You'll notice here's our album. I can collect on that, connect over to the various pictures that I've taken. I can go to settings. Here's where I've got you know my device settings, my connection settings. I've got my location. I skipped over that. Here's the advanced setting, CPU mode, MTP mode, if you want to turn either of those on. The CPU mode, by the way, is very handy if you're imaging uh, out in the cold and you're worried about dew collecting on your sensors and on your lenses. Um, this will help with that. doesn't completely eliminate it, but it does work pretty well. It runs the CPU a little bit faster. The the expense of that is your battery is going to be uh, run down a little bit faster. So when I use this, I tend to connect uh, to a, uh, a USB uh, along uh, outlet so I can plug my uh, dwarf into a 110 outlet and run it that way. Uh, okay, so you can see we've got all these options here. The main thing we want to do is go to photo. You can see right away we've got a little bit of a change in the format here. On the far left-hand side, you'll notice not only do we have the um, uh, joystick button, which I'm moving around right here right now, but we also can change that to uh, up arrows, down arrows, left, right, um, and have the directional arrows. A really great feature that they've added is over here on the right hand side. If I click on this little uh, button uh, that looks like a um, speedometer, I can change the rate of speed for my motors. So if I go up here, that's very fast. If I go down here, this is a little bit slower. And uh, this is very helpful uh, when you're working at night and you're trying to get your object lined up. Being able to change the motor speed is very handy. So that's how we do that now. Okay, another thing that uh, we've got in here, you'll notice that on the far right hand side of the of the uh, app, there's some changes. One is you don't see as many options for your photos, but if you click on photo, you'll find there's a whole menu here. I can go to video, astro, pano, burst. I can change uh, my um, camera mode. Most of the time we're going to be in astro, but I will notice that in uh, video, if you go there and go under functions, this is where you can set your tracking rate. So if you're tracking the sun or if you're tracking the moon, this is where you'll want to set that. If I go back over here and I click to astro, go down to function, you'll notice here that I've got an option to shoot darks. 
Um, if you have already shot your darks before, one thing you're going to need to do is shoot a new set of darks. And these darks will take a little bit longer, and I'll explain to you right now why. If I go over here and click my little hamburger bar, I'm sorry, if I, connect, if I go to my little box thing here and I go to settings, you'll notice down here at the very bottom of the page, I have an option for binning. 4K or 2K. Essentially, 4K is one by one binning, 2K is two by two binning. And we've been asking for this feature for a while now, glad that they've given to us. But that means when we go over here and we go to shoot our darks, we've got to shoot twice as many darks now. So uh, there's that feature. Calibration is the same. This is where you find it. Hit confirm. It will turn left and right, up and down, take its three calibration pictures and, and calibrate. Nothing much has changed there. This is a big change. If I go to, let me show you what I did. If I go to star target, you'll notice that our catalog has changed. These are all of the objects now that we have in the catalog. And it is a wonderful addition. This is something we've been asking for, for them to put more items in the uh, catalog. They've sorted those by solar and lunar, various nebulae, galaxies, clusters, planets, and stars. Okay. Now, the one thing I wish that they would do on this that would be very helpful is if they could sort these by what's visible for the time and the location that you're shooting in. Uh, this is a very handy feature in astrophotography programs like Nina and others, but it would be great if I knew which of these nebula are visible. For instance, I know some of these are, are not visible at all for me right now in my location. Some of them are. It would be nice if it would just somehow indicate whether or not something either darken the ones that uh, are not visible out or not show them, uh, you know, show them on a separate line or something like that. I also can search if I click on the little search uh, magnification thing up here, I can type in and search. I can also go and do a manual entry of entering in the RA and DEC. Very good, like this, great job of listening to the community and adding a lot more features there. Um, under settings, you'll see we also have the option now to save our files as TIFF files and as FITS files. You can switch those back and forth. I prefer FITS. This is where you'll also change uh, the, the count on your imaging runs if you want to do that. Um, you can also do, change the preview from stacked or single image, your binning from 2K to 4K. You've got also your curves adjust, adjustment right here. Um, those are all great, okay? This is where if you go uh, on the little uh, cube box here, this is where you've got, you can go to darks, calibration, all of that. If you go to the little hamburger bar, this is where you'll change uh, your shutter speed, your gain. Um, I also noticed that when I click here on infrared, when I'm in astro mode, it automatically turns the cut filter, or, uh, turns the uh, infrared uh, to cut rather than pass. Great little addition, just a kind of a handy thing there. All right, so that's that uh, feature. They've also updated the auto focus routine. I haven't got to play with this yet, but you're going to want to read the um, directions on this and the documentation. By the way, let me just show you this real quick. If you go back to the main app um, and main page, um, if you go up to the top, you'll see that there is a little open book there. If you click on that, that will take you to the documentation. Right now, I am not connected to the internet, so that's why that didn't work, but that's where you get your documentation and read up on it, okay? Um, so those are the major new features that I have found so far in the app. What I encourage you to do is just get in here and play around a little bit um, and, uh, and check it out. It, it really, I love the update. I think it's a major step forward. Um, I'm sure that as I use it a little bit more, I'll find some other things, but overall, good job.
Okay, overall, Dwarf Labs, I think you've done a great job with the new app. You've added a lot of new features in. I've got to test some of them out yet and see how they work. But overall, you are definitely on the right track. I want to applaud the people over at Dwarf Labs for being very, very responsive to the astrophotography community, um, listening to the things that we're telling you, and making improvements over and over again. That's the one thing I love about the Dwarf uh, labs people. They are really taking this product seriously. Uh, they haven't just built something and then abandoned it, but rather they continue to improve it uh, through some software additions. I want to encourage you guys at Dwarf Labs. A couple of things that, that I noticed is, again, put more objects into the um, uh, into the catalog, make them a little bit easier to sort for beginners. Um, I think the app is a little bit more intuitive and easy to find, so that's good. The other thing that I want to encourage uh, you to do, if, you, if you've if you been using the Dwarf Lab and especially if you've been using the new uh, app, please let me know your experience in the comment section. Tell me the things that you found. Tell me the things that are working good for you. We're all learning this together. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting mine out here as soon as I can get some clear nights uh, again. We've been clouded over awful bad. If you look out, you can see it's awful gray out my window right now. It is snowing right now outside of my window. And so hopefully all that mess will get out of here. We'll get some clear nights and some good nights for me to image. I'll get this thing back out there, test the lunar and the solar imaging uh, features that have been put in, test that new autofocus routine, and I'm looking forward to getting into it. Thank you. If you have not purchased your own Dwarf Lab yet, I'm going to put my affiliate link in the comment section, and uh, and uh, I would love it if you ordered it through my affiliate um, uh, link. That way I get a little bit of a, uh, um, uh, it helps my channel, it helps me, and uh, I would greatly appreciate that. So, Dwarf Labs, good job. Uh, download the app. Let me know what you think about it in the comments section. I'll see you next time.